I've been waiting to do this yeah. replay for episode 5. I've been waiting. Yeah. Let's get into it. First off, let me start off with the bench as yeah. always because that is my weakest lift. And yeah. damn, on episode 5, it has improved drastically. This, ah, uh, guys, just look at that form. Look at that form. Look at that form. I had my scapula retracted the entire time. I had my feet planted and that leg drive just flowing through me as I threw that weight up like nothing. Like it was just a small piece of booty. It wasn't even a big booty. It was a small booty. I know big girls need love too, but I ain't, I ain't at that level yet. So anyway, I threw that weight up. My back was tight. My, my legs were tight. My ass cheeks were tight. But I got some, I got a tip from my boy Eric, who's been watching for a pretty long time now. And he said that I should pretty much widen my feet, spread my legs a little bit wider. And then I should try to push my ass towards my shoulders. You know what that comment reminds me of? It reminds me of dudes who try to bend themselves forward to suck their own. So the benching form is pretty solid. I'm enjoying it. I'm happy. I'm happy the games are coming. And I think within the next few benching sessions now, I'm going to start increasing that weight to get towards them PRs. Some people say I'm using pussy weight, it's lightweight. As I said in the video, I'm trying to re I'm trying to keep the technique solid and I'm trying to make sure I'm just protecting myself on the bench. Because clearly 135, I keep calling it 145 because they're 145s. You get my point? So I keep calling it 145. But it's really 135 in total weight. That weight is easy. I'm throwing that weight up. It's nothing for me. It's nothing. I could do that weight like I could rep it out like probably 15 times if I push myself hard enough. Now moving on to the squats. Oh my gosh. I'm just really realizing how great this workout was that day. Because I think the next workout after that was complete bullcrap. Or was it the day after? Yeah, it was the next day. It was complete bullcrap. I hated it. But anyway. I went up to 185, which was my goal, and look at the speed, the speed is amazing. I'm throwing that, that's my fifth set too, that was my last set, and I put on 185, and I'm still moving that, that bar pretty freaking fast. So clearly, I could do more than five reps at that weight, and clearly, I could do more weight than 185 for five reps. I could possibly do even... 205 for five reps, possibly, possibly. So you guys comment down below what my one rep max can possibly be for that squat if I didn't have so much pain in my traps. Murderous Magician basically said that I should try to squeeze my traps together. Squeeze my traps. I really didn't realize I had any traps to squeeze together in the first place. Anyway, he said, squeeze my traps together so I could avoid it from resting the bar on my spine, which actually pains me. It's the thing that kind of stops me from going really heavy because every time after my back squat workout, I am sore for the entire week. So yeah, and he also asked me how high do I rest the bar. I do high bar squatting, not low bar. I want to do low bar, I used to do low bar. But then I realized it was the low bar squatting that was really effing up my shoulder, my left shoulder, because the flexibility is just lacking there, and it will feel like my left shoulder is about to snap when I do low bar squat. Remember even that first episode, my forearm started cramping for some reason. That was because I was doing a low bar squat. When I do high bar, yes, I have that uncomfortable feeling on my spine, not even my traps, but on my spine, but the weight is... I can easily move the weight. I'm more comfortable when squatting in that way. And yo, high bar squat works more on your quads a bit more than the low bar squat, which works more on your your ass. And I think I would rather I think I would rather have bigger quads than some fat ass cakes. Now I got a couple of tips here. It wasn't too bad. The, I like the incline bench. I'm really trying to work on my upper chest because I am lagging there. And two people told me that I should lower. The, the the bench so lower the incline but if you guys notice at the beginning of the clip really notice at the beginning of the clip that I could only lower one more notch down if I lowered it any more 
than one notch, then it will pretty much be a flat bench. So I'll try to lower the, I'll try to lower it one notch down, see how it works for me. And if it makes me feel it in my upper chest more, then cool. But other than that, I've never just been somebody who could feel it in my chest, feel chest workouts in my chest so much. Like it takes a lot for me to really feel it in my chest, especially with dips. With dips, I wouldn't feel it in my chest until like the, the failure reps. So I guess the same thing applied here for the incline press. So I haven't think much to say about that. Let's work out my chest and hopefully my upper chest looks a lot more plump for the ladies soon enough. Now my boy Joseph was like, yo, your delts are looking crazy. You know, the tricep extensions, bro. I didn't even realize that until I really saw the clip. Because when Matt was recording, he was like, yo, your delts, like the delt separation is ridiculous. I'm like, for real? Because I couldn't really see like like how the camera sees it. The camera makes life look a lot better. And pretty much, I can see the delt separation. The size, the delts actually make my arms look really small for some reason. I'm surprised. Because it was always my delts that I really wanted to get bigger. So I could get that V taper along with the wider back that gets the holes in the sack. And pretty much my triceps and forearms are looking like little chicken wings compared to my, my delts, so I'm surprised there. But do you guys see that separation? Do you guys see that leanness? I wanna keep that leanness while being at 170, not 150. Murderous Magician came back again with all the tips and tricks and questions asking me why didn't I do like drop sets for my, my tricep pushdowns. I didn't think about it, I just want to complete the workout and go home. But next time for my isolation exercises, I'll do some drop sets here and there, even some supersetting. I would want to do supersetting, but like the machines are too far away. So I might superset some bicep curls with some tricep, like some donkey kickbacks and see how that turns out for me. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this replay. I try to keep it as short as possible. You guys leave your tips down below so I can improve next time. And by the way, guys, remember my episodes are recorded. My episodes are recorded like a week in advance. So sometimes you guys may leave tips now, but you won't see me use those tips until like two episodes later, if that makes any sense. Because some people are like, oh, you didn't do what I said. I'm like, yeah, because you told me what to do after I recorded the next episode. If that makes any sense, it may, I don't know. I don't, just, just keep that in mind, okay? Keep that in mind. I do take your guys' tips seriously. It actually has been helping me. Matt has been helping me. And I'm just loving it. You guys are loving the videos. And I'm just gonna keep bringing them. Some people were like, yo, you're not consistent on YouTube. Now I'm so consistent, some people can't even keep up. They're like, holy shit, Simon, you're uploading so much. And you guys don't even realize there's really only two episodes a week. And then there's the replays, which is after the two episodes. And then there's extra videos I may add in here and there. But overall, there's really only two episodes a week. So if you only want to watch the two official episodes, you can do that. If you only want to watch the two episodes and then the replay, so four videos a week, you can do that. If you want to watch every single episode a week, like the other videos, like the deleted scenes, soon enough the reactions. Oh, I have a reaction coming for you guys tomorrow that you guys may like because it was a great video but anyway i'm rambling on too long just know that you guys can control what you watch man you don't have to you don't have to watch every single video i just i'm just happy you guys are supporting me and you guys are enjoying the content that i'm putting out is it getting as many views as i thought not really but the views will come in due time in due time the views will come the subs will come and the popularity will come soon enough i'm just happy that those of you guys who are here and watching are enjoying the videos so yeah i'm out of here stay blessed done just to show you guys some quick stats the watch time has went up 73 percent since the last period the views have went up 37 percent since the last period the likes have went up 200%, damn near 200% in the last period. The likes, the dislikes went up 2%. Uh, the haters, you guys are slacking. Come on, step it up. The comments have went up 291% since the last period. Y'all haven't been sharing my videos as much, but I never really asked you guys to. Whatever, whatever, don't care about that. And the subscribers have went up. Uh, focus, focus. 23% since the last period. To clear up that subscriber number real quick, that 142, that is so low because remember guys, in December I wasn't uploading as much, I wasn't on YouTube as much commenting, blah, blah, blah. I wasn't a part of the fitness community as much in December. I kind of went ghost. So therefore, 
all of my stats dropped. So now that I'm uploading again consistently, the SOS family is now waking up again, watching my videos. You guys are letting me know that you guys are loving the videos and everything is starting to go back up slowly but surely. So yeah, I just want to explain that real quick. My channel isn't dying. There's some haters out there who are actually happy checking my stats, saying like, oh, you're losing subs, you're losing subs. I'm like, I don't mind because I, I like losing the subs that I don't need. I don't care to have an inflated number of subs because at the end of the day, the sub count doesn't matter. You could have 100,000 subs and get more views than somebody who has a million subs, literally, literally. And I think I'll even speak on that in a future video because there are some points that I want to share with you guys that amaze me. It amazes me, which makes me care less about the number of subs I have and just care more about the subs who are here and who are watching my video. So yes, I'm out guys. Again, stay blessed. Done.